Chapter 5 Dragon Slayer Swordfish took an involuntary step back as the knight drew his sword, his heart pounding in his chest. Hugo stood between them and the only safe way out of the room, and they were very high up in the castle. There was no way they would survive falling from one of the windows. However, even as Swordfish felt the onset of panic, Pondhopper stepped forward, her eyes alight with anticipation, and her lips parting into an eager, toothy grin. Oh, I've been waiting for an excuse just as much as you have, Knight. She seethed, small puffs of smoke rising from her nostrils alongside a hungry growl. Hopper! Swordfish protested, looking back and forth between them. Don't antagonize him! We gotta get out of here! Pondhopper snorted, keeping her eyes on Hugo. You don't get it, Swordfish. We don't have any other way out of here. Except through him. Hugo took a step forward, raising his sword. I've slain dragons before. Larger and mightier than you will ever be. You've no chance. Hopper grinned. <laughs> okay, buddy. Prove it. And with that, to Swordfish's panic, Pond Hopper charged. She bounded across the carpeted floor, more smoke billowing from her nostrils, with a high draconic roar. Hugo gave a quiet harumph before stepping forward and lifting his leg as if to swing kick Hopper in the face. Hopper! Swordfish called out, his wings unfurling. Thankfully, Hopper wasn't a complete idiot. As the metal boot came swinging for her face like a pointed pendulum, she dodged to the side and latched onto his other foot. Swordfish watched as Hopper climbed up Hugo's leg, her claws digging into the thick, padded cloth of his trousers. She quickly reached his belt, but Hugo was just as quick to react. He lifted his sword hand before bringing the pommel down on top of Pondhopper's head with a loud crack. Swordfish's heart skipped a beat as his friend dropped from the man's waist. A murderous glint came into Hugo's eyes as he raised his sword, pointing the tip at the still-stunned pink dragon. Adrenaline flooded through him, and the world slowed down. With a shout, Swordfish leapt into motion, sprinting across the room. He wouldn't be able to stop the sword. He was too far away, but maybe he could redirect it. It would be close. The blade was pointed at Pondhopper's exposed chest. Her eyes were only now starting to focus, and Swordfish knew she wouldn't react in time. With a grunt, he sprung forward as hard as he could, aided by a hard flap of his wings. He sailed several feet through the air, claws outstretched, and knocked the blade off course just as it was about to hit his friend. It stabbed into the floor mere inches from Hopper's head, burying itself into the carpet with a dull thunk. Hugo growled and yanked hard on the sword, but it remained stuck in the floor, giving Hopper and Swordfish a brief moment to recover and scramble away. Thanks, Hopper said, her voice shaky as they made it back to the far side of the room. Swordfish took the reprieve to again press his point. We have to run, Hopper! We can't fight this guy! Hopper glared at him. Ugh! And you call yourself a dragon? I don't want to be a dragon! Swordfish shouted, stomping a claw. I want to be alive! And I want to be with my best friend! That gave Pondhopper pause. She stared at Swordfish for a moment. He saw a fire burning in her eyes, a passionate excitement, no doubt at the notion of finally getting to fight a knight. But as his words sunk in... That fire simmered and cooled. She turned back to Hugo. Well, like it or not, we still have to get by him if we're going to get out of here, she said. Got any bright ideas? Uh... Swordfish hesitated. Seeing as he had been hoping to avoid conflict altogether, no, he really didn't have a plan. He scanned his eyes across the room, hoping for a solution. 
Unfortunately, Hugo had now pried his blade free from the floor, and he did not seem inclined to give Swordfish a chance to think. With a battle cry of his own, he charged across the room, sword held low at one side for a rising slash. Swordfish and Hopper let out yells of alarm before rolling out of the way in opposite directions. The blade missed Hopper by a hair's breadth, drawing a squeak of fear from her. Huh? Stay still, you foul beast! Hugo shouted, turning back to her with a follow-up swing. Make me! Hopper shot back, scampering across the floor to dodge the next swing. Swordfish recovered from his roll less quickly than Hopper had. He pulled himself back to his feet and looked towards the door. He saw Kevin positioned by it, staring expectantly back at him. And like that, an idea came to him. Swordfish swallowed heavily and returned his attention to the night. Hugo was still swinging at Hopper. His back was turned to Swordfish, though, and the little dragon took notice of the knight's cape. With a growl, Swordfish leapt onto it, sinking his claws into the thick fabric. A heavy tearing sound filled the air, and Hugo grunted in surprise from the sudden weight. He staggered back a few steps, riding his posture to try and compensate. Knowing he had the knight's attention, Swordfish looked at Kevin. Now! Dutifully, the frog looked up to the handle and shot out his tongue. A moment later, the door was swinging open with a groan. Run! Swordfish shouted, unable to see where Hopper was through the fabric of Hugo's cape. But what about you? Hopper asked, her voice closer to the door. I'll catch up! Go! Ah! Swordfish was cut off as the blade of Hugo's sword carved through the fabric of his own cape. Swordfish's stomach lurched as he crashed back to the ground. He looked up just in time as the fabric of the cape fell over him, blinding him and smothering him in scratchy cloth. And then something hit him. Hard. Stars exploded across Swordfish's vision as the air was driven from his lungs. A strange sensation of weightlessness came over him for a moment, before another hard impact struck the full front of his body. He rolled along the floor a few times, entangled in the fabric, and through a haze, Swordfish was only vaguely aware of Hopper's voice calling out his name. Hopper watched with horror as the now irredeemable knight kicked the bundle of fabric into the princess's bedroom. Her heart twisted in her chest at the sound it made when it struck the ground, and the pained whine that followed. Swordfish, the cheerful, optimistic contrarian, her best friend, was in pain. Fire flooded Hopper's veins, and her gaze latched onto Hugo. He was advancing on the bundle, sword raised for a final thrust. With a roar befitting an elder dragon, Hopper sprinted after Hugo, ignoring the cries from the frog by the door. Hugo heard her roar and turned to her just as she leapt up to latch onto his chest. The weight of the impact stumbled the knight back into the wall by the window, and she capitalized on his moment of surprise to start beating him. Claws raked through steel and chainmail, sending sparks flying and filling the chamber with squeals of metal. Her tail lashed at him like a whip, striking him wherever it could and leaving dents in the plates of his armor. She furiously beat her wings to keep him off balance, creating gusts that buffeted the knight and pulled him away from the wall, only for her to throw the full of her weight against him to slam him back into it. And all the while, Hopper was screaming at him. How dare you! She raked her claws along Hugo's faceplate hard enough to break the visor off. She got a good look at his eyes, now wide and fearful. How dare you hurt my friend! Leave him alone! Get off me! Hugo shouted, lifting his sword again. Hopper saw it coming this time. She leaned back just in time for the pommel to pass through the empty air where her head had been to strike Hugo's own chest plate instead. 
Then, with a snarl, she opened her maw wide and clamped down on his hand. Her teeth couldn't penetrate his gauntlet, but she could still make it hurt. Metal popped and groaned between her teeth as she bit down as hard as she could. Hugo shouted in pain, losing hold of his sword. The blade toppled to the ground with a clatter, and Hopper felt a surge of adrenaline. This was her chance! Pond Hopper inhaled deeply. She felt the tingling in her belly and throat as heat gathered in her core. She held it in for several long seconds until the stinging in her throat was too much to bear. She could faintly see her face reflected in the man's eyes, and she saw the orange glow building in her chest and rising rapidly up her throat. Hugo's eyes widened as he realized what she was about to do, and that spurred him into action. Before Hopper could unleash the flame, Hugo pushed hard off the wall and toppled forward. Hopper gasped in surprise, which turned to pain, the air fleeing her lungs as all of Hugo's armored weight crushed her into the floor. When she exhaled, a breathless wheeze and a handful of sparks were all that emerged. Her vision swam, her head pounded, her hearing was muffled, and she was fairly sure she could taste copper. She coughed a few times and rolled weakly onto her side as Hugo rose back to his full height above her. (sighs) Smoke? Is that all you can produce? He mocked. Hopper glared up at him, snarling. She opened her mouth to say something, but Hugo drove his boot into her belly, forcing the air out of her lungs again and sending her rolling across the floor. Darkness crept across her vision, and she knew no more. Hugo glared at Hopper. His hand throbbed under his gauntlet, and he feared he would not hold a sword again for some time. Though he would never admit it to the monster, she had put up a good fight considering how small and weak she was. He dared not imagine how things might have ended if she had actually managed to get off that breath attack. Luckily for him, however, she was still too young to create a proper flame, so he doubted it would have caused any serious damage anyway. Still, it was time to finish this. With a grunt, Hugo made to approach the unconscious dragonling. A stirring off to one side, and a little pained voice. (sighs) No! Resisting the urge to growl, he turned to see the little blue one crawling out of his cape, still looking dazed. It looked up at Hugo, eyes unfocused. (sighs) Leave her alone! It mumbled before falling back to the ground with a whimper and it still crawled toward him, groaning. Hugo scoffed. Pondhopper was still unconscious. He could deal with her at his leisure. He didn't want to give the blue one a chance to recover. He took one step and knelt down. The fingers of his good hand coiled tightly around the beast's throat, eliciting a squawk from it. He lifted it up and he was surprised by how light this one felt in his grasp. It kicked and squirmed, but otherwise did not offer any meaningful resistance. (sighs) What is your name, whelp? The dragon coughed through the knight's grip on his throat, his eyes finally focusing on him. (coughs) Swordfish, he said. Hugo tilted his head, a little baffled. He shook his head a moment later. (sighs) Well then, swordfish, you should have known that this would end in failure for you. She's my friend, swordfish rebuked. I had to try. Nobody else would. (laughs) 
A very noble, Hugo muttered with a shrug. For whatever it's worth, you made it farther than anyone could have expected from one so small. All the same, you were never going to make it out of here alive. He held Swordfish up to his face, sneering at him. Look at you. You're small. Weak. Too small to fly. Too small to even breathe fire. To Hugo's surprise, Swordfish smiled. <laughs> Joke's on you, Swordfish mumbled. I don't breathe fire. Hugo blinked. What are you? Swordfish's mouth opened wide. Hugo only had a moment to realize his mistake before a pressurized stream of water blasted him in the face. He shouted in alarm, dropping Swordfish and staggering backward right into a pane of glass. The sound of something shattering filled his ears and time slowed as the princess's bedchambers rose up and away from him, framed by the stone wall of the castle. He saw the sky above, the stars joined by countless glittering shards that were once a part of his princess's window. The window he had just fallen through. It was a strange thing, Falling from such a great height to what would surely be his end, he would have expected to be afraid. And yet, even as the ground rushed up to meet him, he found himself overcome with a strange sort of contentment. Serenity. The stars above and the sparkling glass calmed his mind. This was the end but he had gone out doing his duty. He had gone down protecting his princess. And with Swordfish's words echoing in his mind, he couldn't help but wonder if his liege had ever been in any danger at all. Well fought, dragon, he thought, closing his eyes. You have bested me. And then he hit the ground. It had taken William far longer than he would have liked to find his runaway horse, but find her they did. It had taken many assurances and an exorbitant number of head pants, but finally, finally, the flighty little miss had calmed down and allowed herself to be brought back to the castle with William once more riding on her back. As they passed through the gates and into the castle courtyard, the tired soldier couldn't help but wonder what had possessed that frog to attack his steed in the first place. It was very odd behavior for a frog, as far as William's knowledge went. Though, in all fairness, he knew about as much about frog behavior as he did about the production of cheese, which was that the cows were somehow complicit. All right, Fiona, no more antics tonight, eh? He said as he led the horse around to the stables. She snorted under him. He smiled and gave her neck a few loving pats. Atta girl. He was brought short by the sound of shattering glass above him. Alarmed, William looked up to see an armored figure, Hugo, plummeting from the window of the princess's bedchambers. What the? And then the knight landed right in a massive bundle of hay. The impact punctuated with a metallic clang from his armor that hurt William's ears. Needless to say, William was not the only one upset by the surprising event. For the second time that night, Fiona became convinced that she was going to die. William's shout was equal parts startled and frustrated as, once again, Fiona threw him off her back with a horrified scream. She then turned and sprinted as fast as her equine form could take her out of the courtyard right as the gates closed behind her eliciting some less-than-polite curses from the men at the gates. Lying on the ground, William huffed bitterly up at the roof of the stable. 
I quit. In the nearby hay pile, he heard Hugo moan his sympathy. Swordfish's stomach had twisted with dread when Hugo had fallen through the window. He had scampered after the knight and hopped up onto the sill, looking down after him. He hadn't wanted to hurt anyone. Not even Hugo. He just wanted to protect Pondhopper. Much to his relief, it seemed that Hugo had survived the fall. He had landed in a large pile of horse food. Hey, he thought it was called. Swordfish watched as the knight crawled out of the pile before collapsing in a heap, visibly unconscious. Swordfish breathed a sigh of relief. He turned and hopped back down from the window, his thoughts returning to Pondhopper. He recalled how Hugo had kicked her, and concern rushed through him. She was still lying where Hugo had left her. Uh, Hopper, he called, scampering to her side. She let out a quiet groan in response. He hoped she wasn't too badly hurt. Still, he gingerly placed his claws on her shoulder and gave her a gentle shake. Uh, Hopper. Hey, Hopper, you okay? Come on, wake up. Uh. Hopper moaned, her eyes fluttering open. They focused on Swordfish, and her expression contorted with confusion. Swordfish? He grinned, his tail wagging happily behind him. Hiya. Pondhopper groaned again. She pushed him off of her and hauled herself up to a sitting position. She hissed through clenched teeth as she rose, one claw finding its way to her side where Hugo had kicked her. I, ow! Ow, ow, ow! Pain? I am definitely in pain! Swordfish nodded. Yeah, but uh, hey, you're okay enough to complain about it. Ugh. Swordfish? Yeah, huh? Shut up. Swordfish chuckled. <laughs> Some things would never change, would they? With a shake of his head, he stood back up to his full height. He turned his attention back to the exit and found a small army of frogs gathering in the middle of the common room, staring expectantly at him. Swordfish sighed with yet more relief at seeing his horde unharmed. And then he saw the tall human woman standing in the doorway behind them, one hand clasped to her mouth, and his relief evaporated. Pinky? The princess shrieked, her voice high enough that it made Swordfish wince. Pondhopper's expression flattened. Oh, for the love of... just what we need. Swordfish turned to her. Wait, Pinky? Do not! Pondhopper snipped. She stand up and turned to face the princess with a huff. <sighs> Just stay back and let me handle this. But... Hopper didn't give Swordfish a chance to say anything else. She marched toward the princess, head held high, her expression hardened. The princess stepped into the room, her eyes shifting rapidly between Hopper, Swordfish, and the shattered window. Pinky? What happened? She asked in a shaky voice. Where's Hugo? And who is that? First of all, stop calling me Pinky! Pondhopper snapped, her wings flaring open. My name is Pondhopper! Pondhopper! Secondly, your stupid bodyguard decided to try and be a dragon slayer! He tried to kill us! He tried to kill me! If it hadn't been for my friend here throwing him out the window, he would have. Uh, actually, Swordfish lifted a claw, wanting to correct her about a couple of the specifics, but she continued before he could get a word in edgewise. Now, my friend Swordfish and I are leaving. Do you understand me, princess? I am leaving the castle, and I'm not coming back. The princess stared at her for several long seconds, her eyes wide and shimmering with fresh tears. Swordfish huffed in disapproval and stepped forward until he was at his friend's side. The princess lowered her hand, blinking several times. 
Oh, oh my gosh. I, I am so, so sorry. I knew Hugo didn't like you, but I never thought he would actually try to hurt you. Here, how about I get you some nice cooked cow for dessert, huh? My treat. Really? You still don't get it? Plumhopper snapped, smoke puffing from her nostrils. I am not your pet. I'm not anyone's pet. I'm a dragon. I'm your enemy. I kept trying to tell you, but you just wouldn't listen. Hopper, Swordfish ventured gently, lifting a claw, but Hopper brushed him off. Don't, Swordfish. This needs to be said, she stated. She took another few steps forward, managing to stare down the princess despite their difference in height. Look, I don't know what happened to your brother, but do you really think you can replace him with me? The princess recoiled as if struck. Swordfish turned to Hopper again, curious. Brother, he thought. How did you... The princess began, her voice low. How did you know? Pondhopper's expression softened somewhat. Your dad mentioned it. And so did Hugo. He ran off to slay a dragon hatchling or something, and he never came back. The princess fell to her knees, her eyes going distant. I just... I don't know what to do without him. There were several seconds of silence. An idea came to Swordfish. He stepped forward again, keeping his head low. I don't even want to know what that's like, he admitted softly, drawing the princess's attention. Losing your family like that? It sounds awful. The princess sniffled. <laughs> It is. Swordfish lifted his head a little. Then why are you okay with taking Hopper away from hers? The princess recoiled again. What? She has a mom. Swordfish continued. Avorix. She's been waiting for Hopper to come home. And the longer Hopper stays here, the more worried her mom is going to get. It was a bit of a lie, he knew, but it was his best chance of getting the princess to let them go. I'm pretty sure I mentioned my mother, by the way. Hopper noted with a snort. More than once. But again, you weren't listening. You didn't even care. You just wanted another cute little critter to distract you. The princess fell silent, her face falling. A few strands of her blonde hair fell in front of her face, hiding her eyes from view. Swordfish gave Hopper another somewhat disapproving look. He didn't want to hurt the princess's feelings if they could get away with it, but at the same time, Hopper knew far more about what was going on than he did. From what he had heard, it might be unavoidable. <laughs> I'm sorry, the princess finally muttered. I just... You're really cute. Like mittens. But I'm not mittens, Pondhopper stated. I'm a dragon. And I need to go home now. Nobody said anything for a long moment. When the silence was finally broken, it was by a gentle sniffling. Swordfish felt his heart break a little when the woman lifted her hands up to her face and started quietly sobbing. I'm sorry, she whimpered. I'm sorry I took you away. You can go. <laughs> the fire in Pondhopper's eyes withered at the sound, but she was quick to hide her sympathy for the weeping woman behind a stoic mask. She turned to Swordfish. Come on. Let's get out of here. But can we really leave her like this? He asked, his fins drooping solemnly. He felt torn, 
His kind little heart was screaming at him to run over and help the princess feel better, but he had no idea how. Not to mention the fact that any time he spent trying to comfort her would be time spent letting Hugo recover. Hopper shook her head. Look, I feel bad for her and all, but her grief isn't our business. Besides, she's got a doting dad. He'll take care of her. Swordfish deflated in place, his wings ruffling uncomfortably against his sides. But... Swordfish jumped in place and craned his neck to look behind him. To his surprise, Kevin came walking forward, not hopping, walking. Every step was precise and measured, the little amphibian's eyes glued onto the weeping princess with what was unmistakably sympathy. Kevin? He questioned as the frog walked past him. Kevin paused by his feet and cast him a brief glance. He blinked once, then carried on toward the princess until he was right in front of her. He stared up at her for a moment, tilted his head, and smacked his tongue against her knee to get her attention. She jumped at the unexpected touch and pulled her hands away to look at him. <laughs> what? She said, confused. Kevin was still for a moment, and Swordfish found himself leaning in, gripped with curiosity. Kevin acted odd sometimes, sure, but this was new. The frog opened his mouth, his lips and tongue contorting in weird ways that Swordfish hadn't seen from him before. Noises started coming from his throat, moist and high, and they sounded strange to Swordfish's ears. And at first, he thought Kevin's voice box had broken. <coughs> Swordfish blinked. He turned to Pondhopper. Judging by her wide eyes, she had heard it too. She gestured at Kevin. Did he just... Kevin kept going, his voice straining until, at last... A single word pushed past his lips. Sister. To say the princess looked shocked would be an understatement. Her teary eyes opened wide, and her hands flew up to cover her mouth. Swordfish blinked. I think he did. Kevin, emboldened, spoke again his tiny voice rising. Sister, sister, Richard. Wait, 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 wait. Pondhopper chimed in, pawing at the ground. You lost me. That frog is the prince? I guess, Swordfish said blankly, his mind racing. How would that even be possible? It didn't make any sense. Kevin, or Richard, as he had just called himself, had never once said a word in all the time he'd been a part of Swordfish's horde. But he was talking now, and if what he was saying was true, then how had it happened? The princess's shock mirrored Swordfish's own, her eyes wide and unblinking as she stared down at the frog. She timidly reached down to him, and he hopped up into her cupped palms. How? She finally asked as she lifted him up. Richard shifted on his feet, once more struggling with the words. Which cursed me. He then looked back at Swordfish. His eyes bright. Dragon, save me. Swordfish blinked, recalling only vaguely the day he had stumbled upon the frog he would one day call Kevin. Unusually large, hidden away in the muck of a woodland riverside. The frog had been all but comatose. 
He hadn't even squirmed or protested when Swordfish had brought him back to his hoard. It had been almost like the little guy had just given up on life. And Swordfish couldn't stand to let something so small and cute languish like that. And even after that, Kevin had always seemed smarter than the rest of the frogs. But Swordfish had never understood why Kevin had been acting that way. But now, it made sense. The princess sniffled again, her lips twitching up into a smile. She looked up at Swordfish and Hopper again. <laughs> I... I don't even know what to say. She choked out. She let out a sound that was somewhere between a cry and a laugh as she wiped a hand over her eyes. This is... This is wonderful! I... <laughs> Swordfish, was it? Swordfish perked up. Oh, uh, yeah? The princess's smile widened. Thank you. Swordfish couldn't help it. He puffed up immensely, his grin threatening to jump off his face and do his stupid dance. He was about to start dancing himself, were it not for Hopper elbowing him in the ribs. Celebrate your quest later, Blue Dude. We're still in the castle. She reminded him with a jerk of her head. Come on, let's go. She turned her attention to the princess one last time. We can go, right? The princess gave a shaky nod. Yes, yes, of course. Please, go with my blessing. The princess's blessing? <laughs> Swordfish's grin was shaking now it was so big. The day just kept getting better and better. Well, not counting the near-death experience of fighting a knight, but eh, details. Swordfish smiled and gave the princess a little bow. It was a pleasure, your highness, he said. <laughs> Pondhopper gagged. But with that... The two bolted through the door and down the hall. The princess stood in the doorway, waving after them as they scampered into the darkness, with Swordfish's army of frogs wetly hopping along behind them, and the prince in the princess's hands finally reunited. <laughs>